Okay, so this is a time series analysis example. Now, it's quite comprehensive. We'll read it out here. This exercise involves the comprehensive analysis and modeling of a time series using various statistical techniques. So we're going to do them all as one contiguous analysis here, but you may want to sort of read up on individual parts of it separately. Okay, so I'm going to try and be quick as I can going through this video. It will be quite long, but I won't go into detail about some of the things that I will be looking at. For example, the lung box portmanteau test. I'll just keep it brief there. There's a lot to explain about that, but I won't do it in this video. I will show you how we use it in an overall analysis, of course. Starting with the simulation of a time series, it proceeds to analyze its general features and plot autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation. This exercise includes fitting various models such as AR1, AR3 and ARMA11 and selecting the best fit model based on criteria such as AIC. We're going to use AIC specifically. It also involves predicting future values and validating the model's fit using re residual analysis and the lung box portmanteau test. Overall, this exercise provides a detailed exploration of time series characteristics, modeling and validation, allowing for a thorough understanding of the underlying data and appropriate forecasting methods. Okay, so what I'm going to do actually is just talk about the first set of exercises here and then I'll go with these six exercises here first off. Okay, so simulate a time series of length 500 observations uh, in a line chart with the following arguments. So we set the seed equals 100. Now that's actually not an R command. That's just an instruction of what the seed value should be. So we have set.seed 100 later on. AR equals 0 0.9 and MA equals 0 0.2 and order equals C111. So we're going to use those values when we set up the time series analysis. Comment on the general features of the chart, plot the sample autocorrelation function, ACF, and the sample partial autocorrelation function, PACF, of the data. Determine the best uh, least squares linear fit according to adding it to your chart in exercise A and paste the new chart. Okay, so essentially update the chart. Explain whether this least square linear trend can be removed such that the stationary distribution is appropriate for the residuals okay and fit an ar1 ar3 and arma11 modeled to the series data so there's more questions here and we're going to glance over them temporarily uh, just pass them by temporarily and keep moving till we get to exercise a so simulate a time series using the given parameters so we have set.seed 100 and we're going to use the arima or arima.sim command to set up our observations so we have some instructions here that we were told order equals c111 ar equals 0 0.9 and ma equals 0 0.2 and we have 500 observations essentially so n equals 500 okay so what we're going to do is plot that plot observations and we're going to just title the plot line chart of a time series observation okay and this is the plot that we get okay so interesting to look at it looks um reasonably uniform around the 50 mark up above and then it just drops drastically anyway okay so don't have to worry too much about what's in there but just to sort of see do we get that okay so uh, we're asked to make a quick judgment on it and uh, the data is not stationary since the values change over time you know it's noticeably quite jagged there is a downward trend observed in the beginning and an upward trend towards the end indicating non-stationarity let's just go back there yeah a little bit of an upward trend towards the end okay and the mean and standard de deviation are different at different points in time which means that the mean is not cons constant fair enough okay so plot the sample autocorrelation function, the ACF, and the sample partial autocorrelation function, ACF, PACF, I should say. So this is straightforward enough. Our data set is called observations, and we have the two commands there, ACF and PACF. Okay. Now I'm not going to spend too much time looking at them really, but just to notice that they uh, they we have a blue 
bands there down around the zero mark uh but the fact that they are so obviously conspicuously down the bottom and the lines are well and above that just to sort of is a sort of noteworthy okay uh here we go the partial sample partial autocorrelation function again notice the contrast there between the bands okay and how the points or these lines that are coming out of the uh x-axis sort of behave with re with respect to those blue bands I, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about that, that but it's actually very interesting to look at anyway so fitting a linear model determine and add the best least squares fit to the chart linear fit to the chart so essentially what we're going to do here is use a sequence of numbers from 1 to 500 or whatever that is as our x variable as our predictor variable and use observations as our y variable which is our response variable so x is 1 to length one uh, length 500 or length observations with about 500 and what we're going to do is use again use observations as the, the response variable so we have lm of observations explained by x okay and we're going to call that our least squares fit so that's a linear model essentially uh, let's have a look at the coefficients there so coefficients so the object name is the linear model name least square fit and the command there is cof which just extracts the coefficients the slope estimate and the intercept estimate 10.045 is the intercept estimate and the slope estimate here denoted x is minus 0 0.3941 etc etc okay so let's use this model fit to add a line to the plot that we made previously so this is the plot from exercise a plot observations main equals line chart of time series observations with linear fit so essentially i just amended that piece of code so the command to add a, add a line to a plot is abline and essentially what we could do here is just actually add in the or specify input the name of the object the linear model object which is least square fit we could add in cof of least square fit as well or extract the cof the coefficients out of the object but we, we can actually just use this directly which is fine so abline least square fit color equals red we as i sort of said we could just actually name the model that we want to uh, use, extract coefficients from. Okay, so there we go. So very conspicuous downward trend there from top left to bottom right. Okay, um, yeah, that's the line chart with our linear model added in. Okay, so let's have a look at the residuals now. So what I'm gonna do is extract out the residuals from the linear model, least square fit dollar sign res, that's essentially a set of residuals. Uh, the x axis label is time which is a time series y axis label is residuals because we're looking at the residuals the difference between the observed and the predicted values according to the model and we're going to use pch equals 16 color equals blue plot character basically blue orbs as our plot character okay and abline h equals zero that's the x-axis h equals zero which is y equals zero if in mathematically uh, color equals red line type equals two so it's a dashed red line so essentially what we're looking at here is how the residuals react according to the time or how they behave i should say according across the, the time series well the there's obvious distinct patterns here here they sort of go in waves peaks and troughs they're very negative in the first Ha, our first third of the graph then they peak so there's a lot of positive values in the middle part and then they descend quite rapidly into negative territory again uh, towards the end and there's a little bit of a jump towards the zero at the end so essentially you can sort of see that there's a sort of wave function there is what i'm getting at a very distinctive wave function so that's indicates that non-stationarity okay so this is something that has to be addressed or will have to be addressed although it's not actually what we're asked but yeah let's have a look at the, what we're told it is clear that the residuals are not stationary because they are negative in the first instance then followed by a positive residuals in the middle part 
and then negative residuals and uh, they go negative again in the last part before tapering back up to zero okay so that's that's as far as we'll go with that there's a lot to take in there so an alternative solution uh, is using the acf function again using the residuals from the least square fit and just seeing what the behavior is across the time series so the, the command is acf which is to look at the stationarity on this case of the residuals rather than the underlying points and the residuals are not stationary as the acf values are decaying slowly and you notice that they're well outside the bands the blue bands at the bottom okay so acf uh, plots take a while to get uh, get the hang of i won't really have time to go into it in detail here because i want to try and get this video wrapped up as soon as i can but anyway what we have to do now is fit three models um three time series models to our observations okay and in each case we're going to look at uh the observations we're going to look at it from a slightly different specification in each of the three cases we're going to use a command called arima or arima i call it arima okay well i'm not really consistent about it so we're asked to fit an ar1 plot or an ar1 model to it uh so that would be ar order so essentially we're looking at the order uh input there order equals c one zero zero okay so AR1 means the first item is zero and the other items are, or the first item is one and the other items are zero, okay? Just to sort of uh, compare and contrast that to subsequent uh, specifications later on. That's, that order equals is what changes each time, basically. So this is fit one. This is an AR1 model and we have fitted it there. I won't go into too much detail about what we're looking at there, just to sort of say this is a, this has been done properly maybe the, that's not the right model but it's a test model and it's working uh, just to look at the bottom right here AIC equals 2250 so that's as far as I'll go with this we'll just see which of these models is the best fit okay so that's the first candidate uh, fit one and it has an AIC of 2250 okay so now we're going to fit an AR3 model, and in this case, the order equals C3, AR3, 0, 0, because there's no integration component or moving average component, I equals 0, MA equals 0, okay, AR3. So that's how we would do it there, order equals C, 3, 0, 0. So this is fit 2, and we have our AIC down here at the bottom again. This is 1,447 okay 0.22 that's much less than the last case which means it's a far better model essentially okay and the last one is an arma model and what we're going to do here is set up specify that using order equals c101 so it's arma there's no i component in there so that's how we do that 101 and this is fit three and the AIC is 1,817. Okay. So just grouping up all the AIC values there and just comparing them, we sort of see that fit two is the best. That might be a little bit counterintuitive considering how we set up this data and it might not like stand up to further scrutiny, but just working what we're working with, with working with what we're working with so far, will go along with that. Um, I think we'll leave it there because there's plenty of videos, plenty of text uh, content to work on for the sub subsequent uh, part of this presentation. So I think actually I'll just leave it there because this video is now quite long. Okay.